Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. God abides in us is the title of this devotion. Here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, we see, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. And his love has been perfected in us. I find this the secret, my dear friends, to my communion, unbroken communion with God, is to not only live in his love through my union with Jesus, as he says in John 15, verse 9, as the Father loves me, I love you, abide in my love. The classic amplified would say, come and abide in the Father's love with me. So yes, I do this in my prayer time every morning. I have time with the Lord by reading his word and praying. And I abide in his love by abiding in the love that Jesus keeps giving me by the Holy Spirit pouring his love into my heart. And I live in that love consistently, but to maintain that throughout the day, I must show it to those around me. And this is what breaks our harmony with God when we don't show it to those around us in our patience, in our long sufferings, in our forbearance, in our kindness, in our believing the best, no matter how they react. Oh, how I've had to fight against the enemy trying to undermine my communion in the love of the Father when he would shoot fiery darts of thoughts to me against somebody and I would have to cast those thoughts down but to quench them with the shield of faith and go no no I love them and I would pray for them and 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 keep talking in the spirit of my heart towards them by renewing the spirit of my mind and and I keep praying and that that fiery dart would be quenched and then this overwhelming love in which I kept abiding towards them is keeping the door open, keeping the divine gates of glory in me open. Friends, be careful not to close the doors of God to yourself by closing them to somebody else. Jesus repeatedly says, if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. I mean, that is constantly pushed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not just talking, friends, in, in us loving people that are easy to love. No, I'm talking about loving people that try your patience and loving people that, that really pierce you, maybe with some of their actions or responses. And you want to be perfected in the Father's love, then keep having His love for them, no matter what. Now, how can I do this? How can I live in this, my dear friends? Look what it says here in John chapter 5, verse 19, okay? John chapter 5, abide, abide. God abides in us, right? Look at this. God abides in us. Jesus answered in John 5, 19 and said to them, most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. In Jesus, you see that perfect humility that makes him God because of his perfect union with the Father. That perfect union with the Father that he had from eternity to eternity as he himself is God was displayed in his humility, in his submission to the Father. I can do nothing of myself independently of my own account. But what, I, what he sees, uh, uh, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son does in like manner. And the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. He will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That dependency, that submission, that surrender, that perfect oneness is Him abiding in God. And friends, this is what I charge you today. God abides in us as we also abide in Him. 
And there is just an unbroken oneness there. Jesus said in John 17, verse 21, uh, let me read it to you from the Living Bible here. Oh, how I love these thoughts and, and seek to be perfected in them. Uh, let me start at verse 20. I'm not praying for these alone, but also for the future believers who will come to me because of the testimony of these. And my prayer, verse 21, for all of them is that they will be of one heart and mind just as you are, Father. That just as you just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, the glorious unity of being one as we are one. I in them and you in me all being perfected into one so that the world will know you sent me and will understand that you love them as much as you love me on and on and on. Friends, this is such a powerful testimony that our abiding in God is to display His unmeasurable and phenomenal love to the world, just like Jesus came to demonstrate the Father's love to the whole world and His love for the Father. And this is what the Lord wants, and it's in that sweet submission. In John chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus says, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. In chapter 8, verse 28, Jesus says, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I'm he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. It is, friends, in that point of self-sacrifice that people can see who you serve, self or God, and what you serve. The only true living God who unveils and reveals His love in you and through you, or some form of religion that doesn't have any power of mercy and love and kindness for those who don't deserve it. Come on, my dear friends. Life will never find its fulfillment without this, what I'm talking about. We abide in God by this incredible love being revealed in us and through us. And how can I abide in God in that sweet spirit of submission that the Father gives into you through Jesus? This is the power and the wonder of him being at the Father's right hand so that he can live his life in you and me down here. As it would say in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, as he is with the Father, so are we in this world. And that the life he is and has in the Father at the Father's right hand, he can live in you and empower you with that sweet humility and that sweet self-surrender, that sweet self-sacrifice by which we keep abiding in God no matter what we're surrounded by, no matter how harsh the circumstances are, no matter how difficult here in John 17, John 10 verse 17, Jesus says, Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment I've received from my Father. Come on, dear friends. Don't say, you know, Pastor, you don't understand. Friends, I understand very well that I have failed to lay down my life at times because my nature stood in the way. And in my failing to lay down my life, I stopped knowing God until I humbled myself and repented and stopped making excuses by accusing someone else. And I started to say, Lord Jesus, enable me to love with your love. Enable me to lay down my life that I can abide in God. Friends, it is in that you abide in God. The reason we feel the distance with God because we have had something undermine the divine flow in us. And it could be in, in something secret within our heart or something just as public as can be that we don't keep abiding in God in our love for one another. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit wants to help you and me. So in closing, 
meditate on this scripture that I'm about to share with you. It's Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Uh, you know, this was our late queen, Elizabeth's scripture right here. And I'm not saying that her writing said that, and that writing is available to everybody. The queen had this that she felt that she was to honor God in her self-sacrificial service for the people of this nation and the commonwealth. And I tell you, this woman had a way of carrying that kind of self-sacrifice and, and, and self-denying sweet service for the nation in a way that stood as a, as a pillar for the whole world. And she was unashamed where her strength came from. Her strength came from Jesus, unashamed. She was unashamed about it. And she thought that the life she lived had a greater impact than just telling others to do it. She was an inspiration. Now, I tell you, my wife and I greatly loved her and respected her, and we miss her, and we thank God that her son is to his, to, to, in his own way following in his mother's footsteps. And I, I do believe we need to always pray for those in authority over us and not be harsh against them, even if they maybe could have done things differently. We should always pray for them according to Scripture. Read it in First Peter, read it in First Timothy this advice but you know dear friends he says let this mindset let this way of thinking be in you that you see in Christ that even though he was equal with God he showed his equality with his with God in his self-sacrifice in his self-denial in his humility in his meekness he showed his unity, his perfection of oneness with the Father in his humility, in his meekness, in his loneliness. And if we want to keep abiding in God, then this is the key. You may say, I don't understand, Pastor. I, I have these moments, I feel so anointed, and I get such an experience with God, and then I come home, or then I meet people, or then I go to church, and it evaporates. Now, why? Why, Pastor? It's because we have to learn to show to them, to anyone, what we have by loving them with the love with which we are loved, John 15 verse 9, and by sweetly and willingly, daily, consistently laying down our life and growing in knowing God and His amazing grace and by abiding in Him, Abiding in him, no, I'm not going to let this separate me from him. I'm going to sweetly serve. No, I'm not going to let this separate me. I'm going to sweetly love and forgive. No, I will not let this separate me from God. No, I'm going to show forth his mercy and kindness. No, I'm not going to expose this and I'm not going to gossip. And I'm not, no, I'm going to forgive and love it. See, and this is where we abide in God. And this is where the Lord is calling you and me. Amen. Have a good day.